Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> okay, Boomer. It's mid-July 2020. I'm Boomer, and I'm here with my co-host, Jimmy Amadoufis. Say hello, Jimmy. Oh, uh, hello, everybody. How you doing? So what's new, Jimmy? What's new? You want to know what's new? Check out AroundPeteTown.com. They'll tell you what's new. What the, you you want to know when the shelters are opening down the state park? Well, then check it out on AroundPeteTown.com. Uh, you want you want to see a drive-by parade for a local uh, fellow who came home from a long stay in a hospital? AroundPeteTown.com's got it. You want town council updates? You want road closings? How about a sweet corn sighting? Yeah, you want to know when the sweet corn is going to be available, where they're selling it, and when they're selling it? AroundPeteTown.com. Well, that's good to know, Jimmy. Oh, how about you, Palmer? What what's new with you? Well, Jimmy and trying to shake the feeling of, uh, you know, all the negative news, uh, the way it, the national news can drag you down. I, I was thinking the other day that when you get to be our age, uh, you want you think as you get towards, uh, you know, the last third of your life, you're hoping that the world is going to be a, a safe place for your children, your grandchildren, and your other loved ones, that when you leave this world, that uh, you've got that comfort knowing that things are going to be okay. How uh, why? You don't, you don't feel that way now? Well, no, not particularly. We have a pandemic going on. We have 135,000 plus people that have died in just the last few months. We have had race riots going on. We've had uh, so much trouble with our economy. People are in, in, in dire straits. We don't know about how schools are going to open up this fall. The future just looking really uncertain. Ah, so you're, you're feeling kind of down, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, Boomer, it's not the first time the world's been in bad shape, you know. Yeah, I, I think you got a point there. Oh, sure I do. Just remember 9-11 and how scary the whole world was back then? You didn't know whether planes were gonna drop out of the sky on top of you? Yeah. Oh, and oh, what if you were living in your grandparents' time during World War II? What would you think of the world then, huh? Well, I would... Because I'd be pretty concerned, the whole world seeming to go up in flames, at war, fighting each other, millions of people dying, um, the genocide of the Jews, the, whole, the Holocaust. Um, yeah, it would have been a horrific time to live in. Exactly, exactly. And then what happened? Well, the good guys won. And they're going to win again. You just got to think positive, boom. Well, I think there's some truth in, into what you're saying, Jimmy. We have made it through difficult times before, and we have reason to believe that we can make it through this time, too. That's darn right we do. It's like that Christmas song. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. Soon you'll be walking across the floor. Ha, ha. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking out the door. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one way of putting it. Thanks for sharing that little ditty with us, Jimmy. I want to share with you a bit of music. Take a listen to this. aren't you? That's Gina Gonzalez and the Wingmen. Ah, I, I, I kind of get in a groove on for that. So what's uh, that got to do with uh, OK Boomer? Well, Jimmy, I'm positive, feeling positive, that we're going to have a great show because we're going to be talking with Joshua Patterson, a musician in the Chicagoland area. He's going to spend a few minutes talking about his career. Uh, Joshua Patterson, sure. Isn't he a guy who uh, belongs to also the, the uh, Simple Band? That's the man. He is in multiple bands, not only with Gina Gonzalez and the Wingmen, of which he is one of those key wingmen, but also in a group called Suit Up, Skater Boys. He does his own solo acts, and he performs a number of other services. I I like what? He'll perform your wedding if you want one, Jimmy. I don't want no wedding, but uh, okay. 
He's an ordained minister. He does his own solo act. He can teach you how to play the guitar, the bass guitar, the ukulele. He can do a singogram for you. Yes, sir. He'll go right out in public and sing someone a song, present them with flowers and chocolates, saying it, saying I love you in a unique way. He'll even create you visually stunning promotional graphic designs as he's done for local and national artists. Ah, this guy just does everything. He is a talented young man. But before we get him on the line, Jimmy, I have something to share new with our OK Boomer podcast audience. Ah, something new. Beautiful. What you got, Boomer? I've got something free for our audience. I know our audience is already a listening audience. They're listening to our podcast. So they might be interested in free audiobooks. And those free audiobooks can be obtained through audible.com as a 30 day free trial membership by using this promo code of www.audibletrial.com forward slash OK Boomer. They use that unique URL and that'll get them that 30 day free trial membership. If at the end of the 30 days, you no longer want to have that subscription, just simply cancel and you're done. No money at all is traded hands and you've got your audiobooks to enjoy forever. Beautiful. They got a whole month there to listen to audiobooks for free. That's what maybe you can recommend a couple of two, three books there, Rob Boomer. Well, I sure can, Jimmy. I'm going to recommend three books right now. The Phenomenon by Rick and Keel and narrated by Rick and Keel is about Rick and Keel's MLB life. We don't have any baseball on right now. So a great way to get your baseball fix is to read about this major league pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals who got the yips. He got the psychological, I can't throw a ball like I used to. It's one of the most interesting books I've read in a long time, dealing with a uh, psychological anxiety that just crippled this world-class athlete. He is frank. He's uh, completely honest with the whole situation. And it talks about his comeback. It's an amazing story. A second book I'd recommend would be Frederick Douglass's Prophet of Freedom. Actually, it's entitled Frederick Douglass, Prophet of Freedom. This audiobook was written by David W. Blight. It's also being recommended by Mary Schmeek, a columnist in the Chicago Tribune. She says this about Frederick Douglass, Prophet of Freedom. No way was I going to read an 892-page book, even if it won the Pulitzer Prize, and even if 121 of those pages are footnotes. But this biography of Douglass who rose from enslavement in the South to become one of our nation's great 19th century orators and abolitionists seemed like an important book for this moment. So I took a deep breath and started. To my surprise, I was riveted and glad it was so long I could live in it a while. It's a nuanced portrait of a complicated man and also a sweeping history that illuminates our country today. Uh, what's the last book you want to recommend? Uh, it would be The Plague by Albert Camus. Is this a more nonfiction? No, this is the one novel I'm recommending. But again, I'm doing it through Mary Schmeek. Mary writes, Hmm, one spring a highly contagious disease arrives in a community. The authorities try to keep it quiet, but soon people are sick and dying. As quarantines are imposed, the people's disbelief turns into anger fear, grief, exhaustion, and still they lament they can't go to the beach in summer. At the heart of the story is a doctor who keeps speaking the truth and doing his job. Sound familiar? Camus' early prescient 1947 novel, there's even a mention of flattening the curve, is suspenseful, clear, full of memorable lines like this one from the heroic doctor. There's no question of heroism in all this. It's a matter of common decency. That's an idea which may make some people smile, but the only means of fighting a plague is common decency. Well, those sound like some pretty good picks, Boomer. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of books to choose from. You can just simply put a search in for a subject matter or even a author, and you're sure to find something that's going to delight. Oh, well, what's that uh, your, you are, would you call it a URL? Yeah, Jimmy, it's www.audibletrial.com forward slash 
OK Boomer. All right. Wow, such a deal. Free books. Got to love that. And I think you'll love listening to uh, Josh talk about his musical career and how he's gotten to the point where he is right now. He is a former student of mine. I did have him at Wakanda High School. And I happened to have followed him on Facebook and listened or saw that he was part of a YouTube video where he was being interviewed by a fellow musician. It was a two hour plus long YouTube video. I listened to it. And I'm gonna plug that video plus his uh, website and Facebook page for those of you that want to know more about Joshua Patterson, which you probably will after we get a chance to speak with him. If you go to www.joshuapattersonmusic.com, there you'll find his website and all the various things that he is involved with, all the bands that he plays with, all the services that he offers, links to uh, the other band's web pages, his own Facebook page, and so forth. That's where you'll learn even more about Joshua Patterson. Hello? Josh Patterson! Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's good to hear your voice. I got to tell you, that is the longest YouTube video I've ever watched. Now, I haven't watched many. I might be able to count all the YouTube videos on my hand. That's an exa exaggeration. But that is certainly the longest one I've ever watched without having Elvis in it <laughs> or any kind of music whatsoever. But I found it interesting. I'm impressed that you made it all the way through. Uh, well, it was uh, it was bits here and there. I, I, as I told you earlier, I was, um, and I still am, putting up some backsplash beadboard. So when I was inside measuring and trying to make things work, I'd have a play. And when I went outside to cut and whatnot, I'd, I'd have to uh, turn it off. But yeah, actually, I'm impressed too. I was like, wow, I first saw like two hours. No way, I cannot do two hours. But I want to start off by uh, stating why people should even want to listen uh, to this podcast i want to note that you regularly and correct me if i'm wrong here you regularly play in front of hundreds of people and have played in front of uh, thousands is that correct correct yeah and you do that primarily in the chicagoland area in summertime fests uh dirty nellies you got coming up here that's the one venue this old boomer um, is actually familiar with uh, indiana <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, both, most of my bands are uh, based in the Chicago area, but we all travel. Um, so yeah, nationwide, uh, hopefully some more international stuff coming up, depending on, I'm just keeping the fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Wow. You're currently in Wakanda now, is that right? Yeah, I am back in Wakanda, which is funny because for all the times that, uh, I was a military brat, so I moved around a lot. Right. And um Wakanda was basically the closest thing that I had to a home. So I've always said that I'm from Wakanda, but the truth is that my parents live in Island Lake. Mm -hmm. So technically, until a couple of years ago, I've always said that I'm from Wakanda, even though I never actually lived in Wakanda. Right. But you did attend the high school there for four years, correct? Yeah, which uh, if you caught some of the podcast, um, there are still many people from – I graduated 2004, and just from the time that I was going to high school, so many people are still – active musicians some of them are still full-time musicians i i did catch that in the podcast and i do remember teaching there uh hearing about uh, the various bands and, and not really appreciating how unique it was that there were so many bands in the high school that was in you said 2004 you graduated and I took a couple of your classes which um i've bumped into you uh here and there throughout but uh yeah i'm sure it's not even recording yet this is the truth you are one of the few teachers that ever like stuck with me or made any difference whatsoever. <laughs> well, bless your heart. And thank goodness it is recording. <laughs> oh, nice. There you go. I'm trying, yeah, to, uh, I'm trying to balance out our levels, <laughs> but the, good, good to hear that. What, what you took me like for fresh, a sophomore and junior English, I'm guessing. Yeah. I had your English class, which uh, I very so remember my uh, research paper uh, because I was one of the, uh, first male cheerleaders there at Wakanda. So I did my entire research paper on bullying and harassment, which I feel has only become more relevant in oh, yeah. current times. Yeah, you, you were cutting edge back then. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I also took your speech class and I love them both, especially uh, one, I still can recall multiple words of the week that I use and might not have ever known if it wasn't for that class. 
<laughs> as well as your lovely uh, Darwin Award stories. I can't forget those. <laughs> I, I got to tell you this also. Um, I know that you and I are on the same page with some of our beliefs, having watched you go through a debacle on Facebook with some political moron up there in the suburbs, which we won't get into. But <laughs> my what I've shared with people before is that as an educator, I feel like our, my profession has failed in some way because there's such divisiveness. There's there's so little logical thinking. There's so uh, quick to uh, blame without doing any kind of research. Uh, it just I, I, why? I, what did we do wrong as a as an educational institution? And then I listened to your podcast, and I will tell you, I'm sure with a direct correlation from the speech class, you were articulate. Uh, there were there were no um, what did we call it? Vocalizations. There were no ums. There were no ahs. There was no like you know. Uh, it drives me crazy with all those uh, vocalizations, uh, verbal pauses. You sounded like you were educated, and you are. <laughs> well, you have been. Whether it was whether it's formal or whether it's through the hard knocks of life, it was like, hey, our our system didn't fail, Josh Patterson. Things are working <laughs> there. It's funny because um, you know there was definitely a lot of uh, things that I did. I was very fortunate to go to the vocational and do graphic design and, right. in the part time because uh like many people you know a university and like you know some of these futures weren't really there for me so it was nice that at least i was able to not only take the vocational route with you know doing something hands-on graphic design getting the certification but um a lot of the classes didn't really relate to me i was far from a standout student um but i just always for one uh i love language in general i feel like that's how we communicate, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I wouldn't want to have any shortage of ways to express that. And I remember uh, another thing that you said that was actually very relevant to that podcast because he didn't really want any swearing on it, which could be difficult in my profession where I'm constantly working bars and such. <laughs> but I remember even you saying back, now it would be what, 15, 20 years ago, that there's always a better word you can use. Yeah, there often is, there really is. And there's a time and place for profanity, for effect, <laughs> yeah. but, but if you're always dropping the F-bomb, then how can you have anything of, you can't startle anyone because everything's an F-bomb. It's like you're talking about water or something. Yeah, you do kind of devalue it. I remember one singer, one of my bands was the, the quietest, nicest, shy guy. And the first time he ever got frustrated and dropped an f-bomb everyone stopped what they were doing and mm -hmm. just froze <laughs> absolutely okay uh, i want to get going i don't want to take up too much of your time uh but i do want to hit upon that cheerleading uh, uh that you did at wakanda high school the first were you you were uh, one of the first ever male cheerleaders at the high school is that correct yeah yes you and a couple of other gentlemen perhaps yeah, it's actually kind of funny because I feel like the majority of the guys doing it were out of almost protest of the football team and the coach. Eh. Um, I wasn't by any means a, like, I was probably still hitting my growth spurt in high school. Um, but I had uh, come before Wakanda. I went to Glenview, and they had gymnastics. And even though I didn't take gymnastics, my friend taught me a bunch. So also this is the era of that movie Bring It On coming out. So I remember that it was perfect timing that uh, – the football players, some of the jocks were like, we're going to cheerlead. And I was like, oh, hey, can I do that? <laughs> Whereas I might have not had the confidence to go and be the one and only by myself, even right. though I feel like I was the one that was really kind of into the actual cheerleading aspect. Not so much just the, hey, this is better than football, and we get to hang out with the girls, which wasn't bad. Yeah, I tell you, my first reaction, you know, as a wrestling coach, uh, I'm thinking, really? This guy's, these guys are going to be cheerleaders that's what <laughs> girls do but then we saw you in action like hey their hands are on those girls butts an awful <laughs> lot maybe they actually know what the hell they're doing yeah we uh we had the best view in the house so. oh. <laughs> now do you think you could still do that um a little bit ago i put some of my tumbling skills to the, te the test but uh i feel like my wrists are giving out less and less especially being less than likely that you know the girls we were tossing up back then were tiny <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> well that's I, right. that's, I, I was wondering uh, and the, the follow-up question is and could you do it to the girls currently the same ones <laughs> yeah there was one uh especially if any girls cheerleader through college i feel like it's a part of them like you 
you could take the girl out of cheerleading, but you can't take the cheerleading out of the girl. Um, and so every now and then I'd come across a couple of them and we would do a little stunt. I remember there was this one bar that had a bunch of dollar bills all stuck to the ceiling because he would put a pin through it and throw it in the ceiling. But oh. we decided that I, I would stunt one of the girls up there and she would just put it on their own. So they made it for a good photo opportunity. I should think so. <laughs> Very opportunistic of you. Say, I got to introduce you to my co-host, Jimmy Amadoufus. Uh, Jimmy, you want to say hi to Josh? Uh, Josh, how you doing? That's uh, Jimmy Amadoufus here. If you don't mind, I'm going to sit in and uh, maybe ask you a couple of questions here and there if it's okay. Absolutely. We'd be happy to have you, Jimmy. Uh, I'm feeling comfortable already. So, Josh, thanks. You've made it... At, I, as a musician, I heard you talk about that in your uh, YouTube video, which I am going to give links to it, to your uh, Facebook page, to your website, to uh, so that people can explore you and your career as much as possible, take advantage of all the things you do have to offer. But you 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 said you've made it financially, so you're feeling uh, secure at least in 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 that in being a full time musician. Absolutely, I feel like that's the the one stepping stone is can you pay your bills with your music. If you can, then you're a full-time musician, which uh, it's probably only been the latter 15% of my entire music career. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I finally got there because there was a long time that I could barely pay the bills. You were uh, the stereotypical starting artist for, at some points. Very much so. Uh, we were even talking about before, uh, there was a certain time that I was playing for this uh, Potbelly Sandwich restaurants downtown and literally just eating and surviving off of those sandwiches so <laughs> i'm laughing when you say it but i know it's not funny at the time you gotta you gotta be sick of those sandwiches and thinking my gosh i've got to get some kind of money coming here so once in a while i can go to wendy's yeah i i definitely lucked out in that they really had a nice selection of sandwiches and if you know them there's things that they could do there's secret sandwiches that i didn't even know was a thing <laughs> But uh, I could have had worse. I mean, if I was a musician for a KFC, I think I'd have gotten sick of chicken really quickly. <laughs> uh, what, so, but the point is that you are, uh, at least to some degree, if not a great degree, uh, the American rags to riches story. Now, you're not rich, but, but you were darn near in rags there for a little bit. You, were, you certainly understood what it meant to pinch a penny big time and you've paid your dues you've worked your hind end off you made i listened to that to that youtube video you made a lot of sacrifices to get where you are today yeah i uh i really uh think that that's testament to where i got is some of those sacrifices i made along the way there were a lot of life steps and things that i had to watch a lot of my peers going through that i either had to you know i like to say i, I waited on i don't think it's too late for many of them but I watch a lot of people start families. I watch a lot of things happening, and I'm glad that I did it. It was worth it in the end. But there's many times that I wondered, man, I'm not making anything. What am I making this sacrifice for? Right, right. It's uh, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting story. I mean, you're playing in front of thousands of people, and even as a, I'm almost I'm going to be 60 here in a couple of weeks. That still would be something that would thrill me. If, you know, once in a while I'll do my karaoke and uh and have fun with that but but to be able to play in or uh, perform in front of thousands of people has got to be just this huge head rush and as you pointed out in the podcast the uh, the people in the crowd bouncing up and down and screaming and partying and having a great time they're not, they're not they're cognizant of all those years of sacrifice that got you to that point where you're enjoying yourself on stage yeah uh I think sometimes it might be just for uh, the sake of making it seem like it's an impossible goal because um, you don't want to believe that, you know, especially if you're not pursuing your dreams, that they are obtainable, which they're not always. Sometimes it can be difficult, but it's a lot easier to convince yourself that someone had a, kind of a hand that helped them the whole way or someone ushered them into the position they're in, which absolutely was not the case for me. I feel like I worked a decade long internship to just be able to do what I do now. <laughs> decade long internship that's a great way of putting it you but yeah I, I still get asked regularly you know the, it should be more insulting I, I don't take it personally but i get asked so what's your real job what do you really do <laughs> mm -hmm. all right well good for you congratulations it, you reminded me of will smith uh when you were talking about the the dedication the the sacrifice the, the persistence because as i used to tell my wrestlers um, I used to read something from Will Smith, who's, who started his career out as a rapper, I guess. That was 
early in his years he was rapping, and he admitted that he was not the best rapper. He said he, he, he didn't have the skills that other rappers did, but he had the work ethic. And so that when other people were eating dinner, he was rapping. When other people were taking a nap, he was rapping. When people were out partying, he was rapping. So it, that's how he got to his level of success um, with rapping. He just outworked people. Yeah. You know, I feel some people can uh, get a hint of that line. Like, you know, there there are some people that can find small success that are undeserving of it, but it doesn't seem to last. I think anyone that has the longevity in that kind of career definitely had to put in the time, had to put in the persistence. So with all this work ethic, where do you where do you see yourself in five, maybe 10 years from now? Uh, I definitely see myself continuing to do this um in some ways you could look at it as i've already retired and i just to get i get to do something i love as my job uh Which but also huge. you can yeah uh very much so there's a good chance that i will do this forever just because it's a part of me there you know there's a certain point that if you pursue something to that degree it's kind of hard to to take it away so even in the next five ten years i love that uh you know, I still I see myself in the Chicagoland area. It has a wonderful music scene, oh. um, and my job allows me to travel as well because I'm not the biggest fan of the winter. So it's nice to have that escape. Right. But uh, I would love to just continue to do this and see what other avenues music continues to open up because it's not always just being on stage playing. There's so many different uh, jobs and careers in the music industry. As you pointed out in that YouTube video, there's uh, and boy. Uh, you, you, the music industry and so many other industries have taken such a hit here in the last few months. I've my heart just goes out to uh, those of uh, people like yourselves who <laughs> you close the bars down, you close down the the venues, you close down large groups of people gathering. Boy, you really got to scramble. Yeah, we made a joke that for the majority of my career that wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> I had a hard time actually filling bars. <laughs> But go figure, this uh, pandemic comes along when I actually reach some level of success in my career. Oh. But yeah, we're, we're trying to get back to the norm. I know it's been hard on everybody, but uh, entertainers especially are kind of like the last essential job, you know? Yeah. So let's get back on stage. Tell me about some of the uh, the, the uh, interesting moments you, that you've had on stage, whether it was interactions between you and your band members or failures or or things that you saw in the crowd that really you raised your eyebrows off like, whoa that's happening i can't and everybody looked at that <laughs> i definitely i i feel like i i work in the service industry so i get to see a lot of you know your typical drunks your typical uh -huh. people going out letting loose um, but also being an entertainer, I feel like I'm only working on those prime nights where people are deliberately going out. And sometimes you can have the people that don't normally go out and party. I love birthdays or bachelorette parties where you get the girls together that, you know, some of them have just been a stay at home mom for the last three months. They're ready to party. They're ready to hit the dance floor. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it almost kind of desensitizes me to, to some of the things I have uh, that I see, um, it's in any given weekend i will see people falling over i'll see people making a fool of themselves i'll remember things that they won't remember themselves so <laughs> it makes the ones that the stories that really stand out really have to be good ones because even just this past weekend um i'm sure three or four people fell into my mic fan which you think would be something that would throw off the entire process but i've just gotten used to it at this point oh that's crazy you just gotta tell them uh, the tip jar is uh, over there sir <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's funny too because I I can see. I guess I've almost got like a uh, I, I can like a premonition. To see when it's happening. You could see the girls convincing their friend to go dance on on the speaker, and you could see that the girls probably not in the right state to do that, but her friends are still going to convince her to do it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I see this coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes we've got you know our roadies and managers off stage. I like to look over and give them that little like side look like you ready here it comes <laughs> right right a lot of times especially when i was single i felt like i was basically uh getting the party started for everyone else and then just going home alone you know yeah yeah you uh, which can actually even be like a a little bit of a come down from a drug you know you get used to this high and then you've got to experience that that lack of adrenaline as you're coming down and driving home alone 
Yeah, I mean, there you are, surrounded by uh, hundreds of people uh, enjoying themselves, enjoying you, and and uh, you often showing their appreciation, and you get the loud music, and then you're in that car or lying in bed alone, and it's quiet, <laughs> and you're coming down from that that high of uh, performing. Yeah, I've I've definitely gotten to see uh, relationships start. I've gotten to see proposals. But uh, I've never really been able to confirm exactly how many babies uh, I've been made in my honor. <laughs> <laughs> or named after you, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> they should. I mean, come on. If you guys left one of my shows and you got a baby nine months later, the only right thing to do is name Josh. Ah, uh, JP, something like that. You betcha. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, tell us about those Valentine grams that you do, Josh. Oh, you saw the singograms. You know, that's a great one because that has a wonderful story with it. But a few years ago, uh, I feel like the whole singogram idea wasn't anything new. You know, we've had Christmas carolers, we'd have all that, but I just thought, what if I go out and deliver flowers, chocolates, and a song of their choice to people, which nice. uh, has been awesome and made for some great experiences. I've done uh, a few dozen of them at this point, but uh, I wouldn't have even thought of this story unless you brought up the singograms. There was one singogram that I had to do for a guy who had recently been dumped, mm -hmm. uh, so far as she didn't want any contact with him, and he thought a good idea would be to send an unknown person to sing to her at her work. So uh, it was a, I wish it was, I would... a it was a dumpagram. <laughs> a dumpagram. It was a take me back a gram. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's it's going to have a happy ending, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know for him. She seemed mortified. I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't have gotten out of that one quicker. Oh, yeah, you were like like a whole lot of awkward was wafting around? Yeah. Oh, um, that's going to be there funny. Was one I did at a, uh, like a dining hall in, a, you know, it had a bunch of, like a, at a mall or anything. It was in Chicago, a bunch of eateries. And uh, I had to try to find the person I was looking for. And apparently they weren't even there yet. So I basically walked through the whole eating court, dining court, with people knowing very well what I was, a guy with a guitar and flowers looking for that person. Uh -huh. And everyone had that, that scared look on their face, but please don't be me. Please don't be me. Please don't be me. <laughs> oh, you can threaten somebody. Hey, behave or I'm <laughs> yeah. going to give you a singogram. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, that one was funny. She ended up, I caught her right at the door. So she didn't get two feet in the door before she was embarrassed. And she already had everyone watching me because I'd watched the whole court before realizing she wasn't there yet so Edwin's now got their attention on me like okay who's going to be the person getting embarrassed oh that is awesome uh, I'm sure people are whipping out phones so they can uh, completely uh, capture all this and share it with that person yeah. later that's good yeah sing singograms are fun it's a, a completely different thing like you said I'm used to playing to hundreds thousands of people but it is very nerve wracking to play to one person <laughs> I, yeah, you have minimal control over the situation. You're not sure how this is all going to go down, right? Yeah. Bad. I've uh, found sunglasses are good. That's that's an uh, awkward eye eye contact right there when you're singing a love <laughs> song to somebody you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you. That, that would take some uh, cojones to be able to walk into businesses and public places like that and and uh, singing those songs. But I'm sure it's also been a very good experience where the girl was, even though she might have been embarrassed, you've had to have some of them feel somewhat like, hey, somebody, yeah. loves, somebody loves me enough to send a really human here to sing to me. I might only, uh, you know, maybe book six or eight of Valentine's Day and a, a few throughout the year, but it seems to generate a lot of buzz. People are just really into the idea of it. Every time that I come out with a post about it, people are like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. I think like, especially in an industry where I play cover music. So you're not going to hear me play a song that someone hasn't played before me, mm -hmm. but at least I can do something kind of unique where I can go deliver my, my singograms and give someone that experience, which is what it's all about. I mean, ultimately just given something that people will remember. Are, are you dropping business cards and flyers on your way in and out? <laughs> I should do more of them. I uh, sometimes will wear a little sign around my neck that tells people where they can look at the videos afterwards. Right. Okay. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna need an assistant with it soon. I'm gonna need someone to come help me out. Right, right. Well, I'm not in the area, so I can't help you. But uh, I'll give that some thought. That is. Funny. I think you'd look pretty good in those cupid wings. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I would. Ooh, we'll we'll see. Maybe Jimmy can come help me out. Oh uh, well, I don't cupid wings. I'm uh, maybe like a uh, devil horns. Ha ha. ha. <laughs> 
So you do, you teach lessons, you play in multiple bands, you do wedding gigs, and plus the singing grams. Is, is there nothing that you don't do musically? <laughs> no, it's a jack of all trades, ace of none. Yeah. I can I can do a little bit of everything, but um, it's kind of a necessity. I, I admire you. You're you're a hustler. You're you're getting after it. You're not sitting around uh, trying to collect unemployment and say, "Oh, woe is me." You're you're making do. You're uh, just a, a great work ethic and somebody who's got uh, pulling themselves up by the bootstraps. It's a great story. Yeah, it's like I said. Uh, I think I'm one of those people that uh, I really wouldn't be happy doing anything but. So good for it's you. like <laughs> you know every door that closed was one door that wasn't being a professional musician. So they they were good doors to close. Uh, I I love the story about uh, the pot belly situation where the uh, boss asked you, uh, hey, can you can you do this? Can you play solo for like about three hours?" <laughs> and you said yes without ever having done it before. Yep. <laughs> good for you. And it was you... good practice. Uh, later in my career, that would be an, a, a good skill to have, the ability to learn songs quickly to play with a band that you've never played before. I, I feel really lucky that I've always loved the music, but I moved around a lot of different places, and I ended up going to Wakanda High School, which we have had people from Wakanda High School that have been signed by Vagrant Records, Atlantic Records. Uh, like I said, there are still many, many people from Wakanda High School that still play music as their profession. So there must have been something in the water or <laughs> just nothing else to do. <laughs> well, they closed the beaches. They weren't open when you were there. <laughs> there, yeah. Maybe it's lack of water. Now, they're going to open that back up. Have you seen that? That, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's that's coming back. So maybe the, the era is over. Because there's still been a lot of good young musicians out of Wakanda. And now, um, I remember when I moved away from there right after high school, there was really nowhere around this area to play music, but you can go to downtown. There's literally five, six, seven places where you can catch acoustic musicians, full bands playing. Right. So it's cool to see the live music in general has continued to grow around Lake County and this whole area. But it's a good time because when I was growing up and we were playing those high school shows, they were few and far between. And now I feel like there are so many opportunities and venues available. Well, I sure hope things continue to prove in Illinois so that you and uh, your multiple bands and your various gigs can uh, continue to get back to at least some level of normality. Yeah, we're adaptable. As you've seen, I'll, I'll find a way, one way or another. Good for you. It's really been fun talking to you, Josh. It's good catching up. I don't often get a chance to find out what happens to students that you have, especially ones that are have graduated 20 some odd years ago so or, or about 20. So I, it's been fun. And I thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I got to catch up with you. I'm going to continue following you on uh, Facebook and look forward to continued success. For sure. When we get you back in town, we'll get you out to a show soon. I would like that. I would like that. All right, sir. Awesome. Take care and good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Gosh darn, that was fun. And if you want more on Joshua Patterson, then go to joshuapattersonmusic.com. joshuapattersonmusic.com. That's Josh's webpage, and there you're going to find links to the Semple Band. That's S-E-M-P-L-E. -E. His other bands he, that he plays with regularly, including the Gina Gonzalez Band, Gina Gonzalez and the Wingman, who you heard earlier in this podcast, and all the various services that Josh offers. And you can like him on Facebook, on, one of those two, on either of those places, the website or Facebook. You have a link to the two-hour-plus YouTube video he did where you can learn even more about Josh's fascinating rise to the level of success that he's had so far. That's good stuff, and I w we wish Josh the best. And and, and uh, I don't know if you caught it, but there was there was a YouTube premiere that the Semple Band, and that's again S E M P L E, was performing live on YouTube in the basement studio of uh, Keith Semple's house. It was great. Talk about upbeat fun, energetic. I want to go see them live. It was just a, it was a party on a Monday night. Very good stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to get some of that stuff myself. I think that's a good idea, Jimmy. You just listened uh, a little too much to Slim Whitman, you know? There's, there's, another, another, there's a whole another world out there. 
So why don't you get us out of here, Jimmy, so you can go download some of that fine Gina Gonzalez and the Wingmen or Keith Simple Band music. Okay, Boomer, you got it. Ah, uh, shut up. And kids, don't forget to be checking in with AroundPTown.com. It's got all the news that you can use. Stay hip, stay classy with AroundPTown.com. Ah, uh, don't forget your free audio book. That's at going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash OK Boomer and get your free membership started. www.audibletrial.com forward slash OK Boomer. Free stuff. Take advantage of it. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to uh, uh, Boomer here, uh, he'd appreciate it if you'd leave a rating and a review. That'd be wonderful. And if you have any feedback for him, you know, uh, go ahead and contact him at ttaudioworks at gmail.com. Again, that's ttaudioworks at gmail.com. Okay, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.